Good morning, everybody, and welcome to All Shook Up, Share Museums East online festival of museums for 2020. My name is Jamie Everett, and I'm the Chair Program Manager. Now, the team and I are really disappointed that we can't be with you here in person this year, but we've been working hard to bring you all the ingredients of a typical Share conference repackaged into a handy online format. We've got keynotes, regional case studies, interactive breakout sessions, coffee mornings, even a quiz. All you need to do is sit back with your own tea and coffee, a choice of biscuit, and we hope your undivided attention. So let's begin. And let's start with a reflection on all that's happened since we last met in Hitchin a year ago. Now, of course, it would be impossible to talk about the last 12 months without mentioning the impact of COVID-19. At the beginning of the year, we'd all heard of it, but I don't think any of us had any idea of how bad it was going to be and where it was going to lead. For museums, it's probably going to mean, in effect, three winters in a row in financial and visitor terms. And this, for many of them, if they're not, things weren't bad enough already without the impact of COVID, struggling with long-term austerity and ever tightening budgets. But as I need hardly say, COVID is not the only issue on the table. The Black Lives Matter movement swept the US and then the UK over the summer, a key moment for many museums and heritage people being the removal of the Edward Colson statue of Bristol. Fires and extreme weather have been pushing the climate change agenda to the fore again. And of course, we've got Brexit looming as well. All these issues have thrown the old order into some disarray and hence our title, All Shook Up. So where are we heading in the next two to three years? Well, the phrase, the new normal is itself now commonplace. And that I think is a recognition that even if there is a cure or a vaccine for COVID, the world is never going to be quite the same again. Tourism is likely to be greatly reduced for some time, especially international tourism, and we'll probably be shielding to protect the most vulnerable of our society for quite a while too. And that means that volunteers, because museums tend to rely on the older volunteers, of course, could be in shorter supply. There will be greater sensitivity to differing world viewpoints as well. And museums are going to have to cope with the climate effects of climate change, including more extreme weather and, weather and greater risk of flooding. And digital, as you see here, is really propelled to the forefront. So what will museums have to do to cope? What are they going to need? Well, I think we should start by taking a positive approach and saying to ourselves, never waste a good crisis. If tourists are not returning, then we need to refocus on local audiences and new audiences, those who've never been to your museum before. And we know that there are rather a lot of these people this means reviewing audience data if you have it and collecting and understanding it if you haven't and then acting on it. And by acting on it, I mean looking at the stories you tell in your collections, the programmes you do, the events you do. This could be bringing out hidden stories or telling existing stories or stories about existing objects from new viewpoints. For some, it might mean decolonialising their collections. For others, it a re-examination of what they hold and why they hold it could give new insights. Either way, to do this effectively, you're going to have to work with your communities, who of course are also your audiences. Most museums have long reported difficulties recruiting enough volunteers, and as we've seen, this may get worse. Where people can't make it into a museum, a shift to different volunteering patterns may help, such as online volunteering. We've already seen excellent examples in the region, including the Museum of East Anglian's Life's, Museum of East Anglian Life's online volunteering programme, which has pulled in international volunteers. There's an opportunity to work with a whole age demographic of younger volunteers. They may not fit your traditional museum volunteer profile. Um, turnover may be higher. They might need to be managed differently. But again, there's a large resource of untapped talent there. Above all, to make this work, museums are going to need more diversity. That's diversity of skills, diversity of thought, and diversity of experience, and on the boards, in their staff, and in the volunteer teams. All Shook Up addresses all of these issues and more. The SHARE team has adapted its programme to reflect the new normal, and we hope you'll feel inspired to do so too. We know that many of you have already made radical changes in your museums, and more is to come. So we hope the case studies and the examples you hear from us over the next two weeks will be inspirational. Finally, before we begin, I need to say a few words of thanks. 
So firstly and foremost to Arts Council England, who continue to be SHARES funders for the 2018 to 22 programme. To our partners across the east of England, including the County Museum Development owner, uh, Officers and those who supply, employ and support them. To the Art Fund for awarding SHARE over £23,000 to help museums reopen after lockdown. And to both the Arts Council and National Lottery Heritage Fund for their emergency support grants to museums in the region. Without all their support, we would be in a much worse place than we are now. And personally, from me, I want to express my deep gratitude to all our contributors over the next two weeks and to their share team for all their hard work on this programme. So to formally welcome All Shook Up and to introduce our first keynote speaker, please welcome Steve Miller, Norfolk County Council's Director of Cultural and Heritage, Head of Norfolk Museum Service and Head of Norfolk Art Service. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Jamie. I don't think anyone working in museums at the beginning of the year could have foreseen how things would go over the last seven months. The effects of COVID-19 and lockdown deprived museums of our visitors, our lifeblood and our reason to be. But while visitor numbers have been a major challenge this year, it's very encouraging to see that people do still want to visit us when they're able to, and that museums are seen as safe, enjoyable places to be. Many of you have reported excellent numbers over the October half term, and despite the national lockdown over November, we remain confident that we will be able to welcome visitors back again very soon. COVID has of course triggered immediate and dramatic changes in the way we operate and engage with the public. There is a sense that we are only just at the beginning of what will be a longer term revolution in the way we work. All Shook Up explores some of these issues that we face together. One of the biggest changes has seen how digital engagement has transformed from a should have into a must have. It's now an essential tool for all museums. For many it has replaced, albeit temporarily, physical exhibitions, events, learning sessions and meetings. We know that these will return, but we also know that our new engagement with digital is starting to change the way we look at the world and it's opening up new channels of communication with new audiences. And it is also our chance to do things more efficiently and sustainably. In short, let's not miss this important opportunity. In order to survive, it is vitally important that we reconnect with our communities and that we can demonstrate our value in these changing times. We have seen many excellent examples of museums pulling together and supporting their communities, from providing staff and volunteers to the COVID emergency response, to acting as hubs for the distribution of food and supplies. This kind of initiative places us at the heart of our audiences, but I want to encourage you to shout about all the good work you are doing Museum professionals are typically very modest people, but we need to celebrate our own worth. Unless we tell people what we do, we cannot expect to be recognised for it. So let's make the most of the pandemic and use it as an opportunity to reshape what we do, as well as an opportunity to become more engaged with our audiences and our communities. I hope you will be inspired by all the great presentations the SHARE team have put together over the next few days and that you'll find some great ideas that you can take back to your own museums. Finally, I'd like to amplify Jamie's thanks to everybody who has funded and supported the SHARE programme over the last year. My special thanks go to Arts Council England for investing nearly 1.75 million in SHARE over the course of the 2018 to 22 programme, and to the Art Fund for its very generous award of 23,587 pounds, which enabled SHARE to launch its Next Steps grant for supporting museums to reopen after lockdown. Special thanks also go to all our contributors to All Shook Up, who have all given their time and knowledge for free. So many people from museums in the region have contributed to share over the past year, and it would be impossible to name you all here, but we know who you are and we thank you all. And thanks of course go to Jamie and to the whole share team for their hard work in difficult circumstances in pulling together All Shook Up. So without further ado, please allow me to declare All Shook Up well and truly open and to introduce the speaker of our very first Shed Talk, Dr Errol Francis, Chief Executive of Culture And. Culture And is an organisation which aims to promote diversity in the arts and heritage, workforce and audiences. And Dr Francis' presentation is entitled Black Lives Matter, Decolonisation in Museums, a very fitting first theme for our conference. <laughs> 